Okay, but it's an exciting day. We have some changes coming to our baby system that we have at the office to make things better and happier for our patients and for us. And I have great news for the dental assistant today we're making some changes to the baby program moving forward that I hope will make your lives much easier. Um, we're changing a fundamental principle that we have in the office for a long, long time. We have scheduled babies uh, and determined when they're coming back based upon their insurance types, and that is now completely changing, all right? We're now putting a big emphasis on the risk that a child has, and that's going to determine when a child is scheduled to come back in three months or six months. We're also putting a focus on risk as kind of a factor that we talk about in our baby of, uh, appointments and our PowerPoint presentation to help parents understand the importance of risk with their kids and uh, how at risk they are for cavities, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is the new slide. Uh, this is a new slide that's going to be on the PowerPoint. It's going to come right after. Um, we've talked about the regular dental checkups. We're talking about white spots and coming to the dentist. There's a new slide that you can use and available to you that talks about risk for dental decay. And what it basically does is it talks about either being a high risk or a low risk patient. Of course, high risk patients are going to come every three months and a low risk patient is going to come every six months, okay? There's some major factors that help us determine if, if a patient is high or low risk and it's our dental assistants that are really going to be making that decision on a patient to patient basis. Some of the things that are included is their brushing habits, their fluoride use, uh, their sugar intake, uh, their timely dental visits, and just their family and genetic history, okay? These are things that the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry recommends to help us determine how at risk a child is. And these are not new principles. These are things that we've done at the dental office for a very, very long time, all right? And in fact, if you kind of refer over to our baby skills, uh, our baby uh, risk assessment we have right here, this colorful form you're all familiar with, it has some questions on here that determine high and low risk. And you're used to sort of assessing these questions and then circling if a patient is high or low risk. So here, for example, we have a, a patient, Kaysen, who was seen, um, who through all the questions was low risk for everything. And so naturally, it circles the six month risk category, okay? This form has become particularly important because it will really determine if a patient's gonna get scheduled to three months or six months. It has nothing to do with their insurance. You'll notice the insurance is not on this form anywhere if a child is a high risk factor, they'll give them three months. If there are low risk factors all completely up down the line and they have six months, then they're a six month type of baby, okay? And I'll make sure to note that anytime a patient has at least one risk factor, that makes them high risk, okay? So for example, if you have a new patient, you've got their information all filled out here and you come down, they're brushing twice a day, and, uh, but they're not avoiding their milks and juices like they should and not keeping them just to meal times, we're gonna put them at high risk. And so that will make them then a three month fall. Even if they're commercial insurance or self-pay, they're still going to be a three month scheduling situation, okay? So that's the first thing, the big change when it comes to risk. Be able to use this slide as needed, be familiar with it. You can share it if you feel like it's important to your conversation. And then completing the risk assessment you know, as you have in the past, was circling whether three or six months based upon the risk, not their insurance type, okay? Now, another thing to go along with this um, is that uh, these two forms you're familiar with, your health questionnaire and dental risk assessment questionnaire, this is the best news of all. Guess what? They're going away. We no longer have to do those darn forms. So I'm excited about that, and the only form they're going to have to fill out and uh, complete with them is this risk assessment right here, okay? So that's great news for everybody. Now, as far as things go, just to recap and reiterate what I'm kind of talking about, I'm gonna go over to a patient's chart here. When we now look at a baby, all right? They have their chart pulled up, we've gone through everything, and we've discussed everything. What we're gonna look at is determine if they're scheduling in three to six months based upon their risk, all right? And then remember, we do not need to look at anything on this primary insurance, oops, primary insurance anymore, all right? What we're gonna look at is simply the responsible party. Now, if a patient has commercial insurance, and we're going to put their you know, appointment in the three months, it might create an estimated insurance value, which means if there's any number here in the patient estimated value, you need to take them to the financial court in the front where they will then handle the financial situation that's related to them coming back in three months. You don't have to answer those financial questions. You answer the risk questions, okay? The other thing that will be changing as you go to schedule that, there will no longer be options as far as what type of appointment you're scheduling next. It'll always be the 0145 code, all right? So you get in there and you go to find it, it's always gonna be 0145, 0145, 0145, no matter what. It's simplified a lot, so that explosion code now just has that one singular code, which again, once you put that in, it might cause an estimated insurance portion for the patient, but again, you just take them to the front and they will handle it from there. So that's the exciting and good news of the changes coming along uh, with change at risk, uh, how we schedule our patients, um, getting rid of the forms, and uh, being able to simplify and just use that singular code. So looking forward to y'all learning how to do this and practicing this, and uh, thanks a bunch.